This is the kill test. It'll kill. The Chakram. The Chakram is an Indian throwing weapon which dates back hundreds of years. Warrior Sikhs would throw it like a frisbee or spin it at high speeds on their fingers before launching it into the enemy. Weapon of the Hindu god Vishnu, its exotic nature has resulted in it appearing in TV and movies. Odd Job's lethal bowler hat in the James Bond movie Goldfinger was a variation of the weapon, as was Xena's weapon of choice in the cult TV series. The Indian warriors would wear multiple chakrams into battle, carrying them around their arms, their necks, and even stacked high on their heads in specially designed turbans. For the strength test, we're going to take your chakrams and see if it was designed well as a throwing weapon. We're going to use a specially designed mechanical device that will launch your weapon into the sugar canes because sugar canes have similar consistency as human limbs. If your weapon can cut cleanly through a sugar cane, that would indicate that you have a weapon that would do mass destruction in the field of battle. This device here is calibrated so that every throw is going to be the same for each of your designs. Chris, you're first. Are you ready? Yes, sir. In three, two, one, engage! That's cool. Well, Chris, it cut two sugar canes. I see no indentations on the edges here. This will cause maximum damage in the battlefield. Good job. Fantastic, thank you. OK, Trenton, you're up next. In three, two, one, engage! I watch mine just kind of do an overarching arc, just a bloop. It hits the sugar cane very low, just a couple of inches off the ground. However, it shears them, and that means I'm good. Well, Trenton, because of the weight, obviously it didn't fly out as high, but it did cut. This definitely will be an ankle cutter. Now for the kill test. The chakram is primarily a throwing weapon. However, in close quarter combat, sometimes throwing a weapon is not an option. Trenton, you're up first. This is designed to be a handle, correct? Yes, sir. So in order to keep myself safe, I'm gonna hold the handle and I have to protect the back of my arm with this. So on the design alone, that's a concern. Let's find out what it does. Well, Trenton, that performed quite well. It cut some ribs and it disemboweled the dummy. It will kill. Good job, Trenton. Chris, you're up next. Excellent. Wow, well, it really opened him up in the belly here, so he's totally disemboweled. Definitely cut through all the way and broke a rib. It'll kill. <laughs> you have both performed outstandingly. However, there can only be one winner of $10,000. Chris, you are the Forged Empire champion. Congratulations. Trenton. Unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. No, of course I'm disappointed. I fought real hard. Thanks. I'm sorry. Man, Chris, he did an awesome job. That's the kind of person you want to lose to. Chris, congratulations. You will receive a check for $10,000. Congratulations, Chris. In function and form and historical accuracy, your blade performed the best. I'm uh, a little in shock. Chris isn't here anymore. Please leave a message. (laughs) 
the Tall War. The Tall War was a lethal and fearsome combat weapon originating in the 1300s. Instrumental to the militia of the Mughal Empire, its curved blade was optimal in delivering repeated blows to human flesh without the danger of getting stuck in bone. The weapon also included a sharp spike attached to the pommel that could be used to strike down opponents in close quarter combat. When off the battlefield, the Tall War was a sacred sword worn by Sikhs as an article of faith and symbolized their duty to defend the rights of those who were unjustly oppressed. All right, gentlemen, this is the sharpness test. Now, the Tool War was a blade respected throughout India, so to test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting into these sugar canes. Dave, you're up. Are you ready? Absolutely. All right. The sugar cane speaks for itself. There's a lot of weight in this, but it's not bad. It's balanced very well. So the design of your knuckle bow, uh, being inside where this, this pummel is, if my hand slips back there, I'm kind of whacking into that. But it's sharp. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Jordan. You ready? I'm ready. OK, let's do this. I just love sabers. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cutter. It's fast, it's light, but the profile of your handle could be a little bit larger for my hand, but all in all, the cuts speak for themselves. It just passed through with no resistance whatsoever. Nicely done. The Tall War, a battle-tested weapon. But what kind of lethal damage does this weapon do? To find that out, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on this ballistics dummy. David, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Doug in the ballistics dummy. This is the test that I wanted to see. I'm just like super excited. <laughs> your edge of your blade is sharp enough to cut and lacerate the whole torso here, cutting deep and cutting into bones. Same thing with the clavicle over here and into the ribs. Your handle construction is a little bit on the wider side, but it's wieldable. Overall, your weapon will kill. Good job. Thank you. Jordan, you're next. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Jordan, let's talk about your blade. Your edge geometry here definitely lends itself to be a very good thruster. It sliced in easily. Your edge is razor sharp, that I'm able to lacerate into the dummy and break some bones. Your handle is a little bit on the skinny side, but I'm still able to index and hold on to it. Your weapon will kill. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. The tool war was a battle-tested weapon known to actually take heads in combat. To test the strength and durability of your blades, I'll be chopping four times into these beef rib sides. This is not about what your blade does to the beef, but what these ribs do to your blades. All right, Dave, you're up. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. OK, Dave, I've got a little bit of chipping and rolling right where the impact is. It's not deep, but it is there. All in all, it felt good. All right, Jordan, you ready? Guess so. <laughs> Took a little shrapnel off that one. I can run my fingernail along that edge and not feel anything. No bumps, no chips. Still straight, everything's still tight. Good job. Thank you. Gentlemen, when weapons of this caliber come into this arena, these decisions are never easy. The Forged and Fire champion is... Jordan, congratulations. You were the Forged and Fire champion. Congratulations.
David, you created a beautiful weapon, and it was a pleasure to use it. And this decision came down to the finest details. Basically, the positioning of that knuckle bow on your handle and those chips that turned up in your blade in the strength test. For those two reasons, we're letting you go. David, please surrender your weapon. Absolutely no regrets. I would have liked to have done better, but I agree with the judge's decision. I came here to prove that I could hang with some of the best bladesmiths in the United States, and I think I proved that I can do that. Jordan, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving that check for $10,000. How do you feel right now? I feel great. <laughs> and uh, I feel pretty accomplished. <laughs> well, you should. What a great way to jumpstart my career in making really high quality blades. Hold on. This is what I've really wanted for a long time. It's why I came here. Thank you. I'm Forged and Fire champion. A pair of Bognac. Wow. Meaning Tiger's Claw, the Bognac was a ruthless weapon originating from India. While concealed in the hand, it could serve up surprise attacks, resulting in deep gashes that pierced through both skin and muscle. This variation was called the Bishwa Bognac and included a lethal blade that was made to resemble the sting of a scorpion. This design made it a triple threat where it could either thrust, slash, or claw its way into an opponent. One of the most well-known uses of the weapon is recounted in the history of the Maratha Empire, when Emperor Shivaji secretly wore a bagnak and fatally disemboweled his enemy. Bladesmiths, to see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your bagnak and deliver multiple slashes and thrust and claw at the spit carcass. Josh, you're up first. You ready for this? So ready. My heart is beating out of my chest, and I'm just trying to calm myself but I'm pretty confident that it's gonna perform well. To be my Tiger Claw today, please welcome back my brother, RJ Markaida. All right, Josh. First up, it's comfortable. My three fingers in the middle allow me to grasp on to the claws easily and not feel that it's gonna impede my movement with the hand. The clawing is very deep. Your slashes cut deep into this big carcass. Overall, your bagnat will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, Chad, your turn. You ready? Yes, sir. The only thing that I'm really hoping to hear right now is just uh, Doug will say he'll kill, because that's a pretty big accomplishment. All right, Chad, first up, the handle, it's on the thinner side. There's a little bit of movement there, but the positions where you have the claw is secure. It's safe. They're razor sharp. On the lacerations there, the slicing, it cuts deeply. Overall, your weapon will kill. Thank you. Well, RJ, I can see that your fighting skills have not changed since we were kids. You still scratch like a girl. Cat claws. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you had a lot of fun. Next up is the strength test. Ben? Bladesmiths, to test the strength and durability of your bog knock, I'm gonna be clawing and stabbing away at these logs. Remember, this test is all about what happens to your blades, not what happens to the log. Josh, you're up first, you ready? I'm ready. Josh, the claws held up very well. There's no mark on them that they've ever even seen a tree. 
but you lost your tips. Yeah. The first one went as I started to pry, but the second tip, it cracked as soon as I stabbed in. I like the feeling of these in my hands. They were comfortable to wield, but you can't deny that they're not there anymore. Chad, you're up next. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, Chad, you lost one of your tips. The other one was scaring me, but it's in one piece. It held up well. I like that you did Damascus. I like the pattern of it. It's really pretty. Overall, well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blades, I'll be clawing and slashing at our Sandman here. Unlike the strength tests, this is all about what your weapons do to this target. Josh, you're up first. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, Josh, these are sharp. You can see these cuts, just clean rakes across the chest. No tearing. I actually like that hook you've got. These are definitely cutters. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Chad, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Chad, these are amazingly sharp. Each one of those cuts is beautiful and clean. They're very light, very fast. I think you did a beautiful job. These are very nice weapons. Thank you. Bladesmiths, what started as a round one nuts and bolts challenge came down to these bog knock. Both of you have put in an incredible amount of work. Unfortunately, in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged of Fire champion. Chad, congratulations. You are a new Forged and Fire champion. Good job. Josh, unfortunately, your Bognock did not make the cut. Josh, you brought us a matched pair of beautiful knives, very sharp and comfortable in the hand. But unfortunately, in the strength test, yours took more damage. And that's why I have to let you go. I understand. Josh, please surrender your weapons. I'm a little discouraged, a little disappointed, but uh, I'll bounce back. I'm really proud. To make it this far, to me, is real acknowledgement that I have a skill set for this, that I'm going to keep uh, pursuing it, keep getting better, learn from my mistakes. Chad, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for how much? $10,000. That's right, $10,000. Good job. Please present your weapons to the judges. <laughs> I'm feeling really good right now. That's <laughs> lost for words. Being Forged and Fire champion was surreal. I was able to show my best, and it makes me feel really proud. The Qatar. The Qatar is a punching and thrusting weapon originating from Southeast Asia. It was the special weapon of the fearsome Rajput warriors from India, who were said to hunt tigers with a pair of Qatars prove their skill, bravery, and nobility as warriors. It has a distinctive H-shaped handle which places the large triangular blade or blades directly over the wearer's clenched fist. The experienced warrior would use the katar like an extension of their arm, allowing for fluid, fast, and agile attacks in much the same way as the famous Marvel superhero Wolverine uses his deadly claws. To test your katar's balance and ability to slice and slash, we have created this multi-layered strike zone. It consists of different targets at varying positions. Jamie, you're first. Are you ready? Absolutely. Nice. Definitely has got good swing to it. Cuts to the air. As a slasher, 
I will cut. Good job. Thank you. David, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. It is a good slasher, but I wish you didn't extend this guard here. It has some issues. Turning my wrist around. Good balance, though. Thank you. Both of our blades performed really well. It's anybody's game until the fat lady sings. To test your weapon's ability to deliver a lethal strike, I will take your weapons to punch and thrust into this ballistic gel dummy that is wearing the kind of Indo-Persian armor that these weapons would face. Dave, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm feeling a little trepidatious. I'm hopeful. My blade will cut through the chain mail. Well, that went to disembowel him. That punctured right through the chain mail. Definitely went right into the heart. That, sir, is a killer. Thank you. All right, Jamie, you're up next. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Disemboweled in there. It didn't quite go through the chain mail. But because this splits apart, it got in a little nick right in there. And on the final kill right above there, it got through. Jamie, it will kill. Thank you. Two kill shots. I was pretty happy with that. I think anybody on a battlefield would be. For the strength test, your guitar will be placed in this pneumatic arm thrusting device. This device is calibrated so that every thrust is going to be the same for each of your designs. And just to make it more interesting, we've doubled the layers. Your Qatar will have to go through two sheets of metal. Dave, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, engage! Very nice. That went right through both sheets. This blade is strong. Thank you. My blade pierces both sheets of iron. Awesome. Philly steel. OK, Jamie, we've loaded your guitar into the device. Are you ready? I'm ready. In three, two, one, engage. Well, Jamie, it went through the first sheet of metal. It didn't go through the second sheet of metal. And your alignment on the tips are now warped. But it still went through the first sheet. Good job. Thank you. It's really disappointing to see that my guitar didn't go through both sheets of metal. But as far as design and performance, I'd say we're about neck and neck still. Jamie, David, you've both been outstanding competitors. However, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. David, you are the Forged Empire champion. Congratulations. Oh. Jamie, you did not make the cut. The creativity that went into your blade, all really, really good. But I think historically, there's a reason that most bladed weapons have a single blade. And that second blade just winds up slowing everything down. And because it didn't pass the tests as well as David's blade, that's how we made our decision. Thank you. Jamie, please surrender your weapon. It's validating for me to have made it this far. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know I can compete with guys that have been doing this for 20, 30 years. All right, brother. Congratulations, David. You are the Forge and Fire champion. You're going to get a check for $10,000. How do you feel, man? What a road. Dave, you've never made a guitar before, and look what you came up with. Your Japanese masters would be so proud of your work. Congratulations. Thank you, Doug. 
A 10G purse? It's coming at the perfect time. Thank you very much. Domo arigato gozaimashita. The Pada. What the f***? The Pada was a unique gauntlet weapon developed by the Marathas of Central India. This double-edged weapon had a long, flexible blade over four feet long. The Pada was so distinctive, it was featured in the cult classic film Willow. Instead of featuring a guard like most swords, it had a steel gauntlet that would cover the hand and sometimes even the forearm. With their arm strapped inside of the gauntlet, the user would not have the use of their wrist. Therefore, a soldier equipped with a Pada needed experience in using such a unique weapon. While the Pada was commonly used by mounted warriors, its design allowed even a soldier on foot to strike from a wider variety of angles compared to a conventional sword. To see how sharp your weapons are, I will take your Pata and I'll deliver three sharp blows on these meat carcasses. Travis, you're up first. You ready? Might as well. I feel pretty good going into weapons testing. I know my blade has good geometry and it's comfortable. Well done. OK, Travis, very nice, clean lines with your blade. On the motion, it's got great recovery. A little bit heavy for the gauntlet there, but it is wicked sharp. Your weapon will cut. Thank you. Good job. All right, Shane, you're up next. You ready? Yes, sir. I know this weapon will hold up to the test. I mean, that's a given. I built this weapon strong. How it performs doing those tests is the question that's still in my mind. Well, Shane, off the bat, it's very heavy, hard to handle in terms of the recovery. Your blade is gorgeous, though. Beautiful Damascus pattern. In terms of sharpness, it did almost cut through the two pieces over there, cut all the way through the centerpiece. So this blade will cut. Thank you. Next up is a strength test. Dave? Now, a pata in combat had to be sharp, but it also had to be strong. So to test your blade's strength, we're going to put it in our vise and then flex it both directions to 20 degrees. If your blade's strong, it should return to true. Travis, you're up first. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. I'm pretty nervous right now. Anytime somebody shoves your tip in a vise and goes bending on it, you can't help but think something bad's going to happen. 20. Looks good so far. Wait. All right, Travis. You know, everything is still right and tied up here. Your connection to the gauntlet's very solid. Good job. Thank you. All right, Shane, your turn. Let's do it. Just 10. Twenty. All right, going the other way. Ten. Ooh, twenty. All right, well, Shane, I was actually worried more about the connection right here flexing, since you've got it supported on that one side. But your blade is true. Thank you. Next up is the kill test. For that, I'm going to hand you over to Doug. To see how much lethal damage your weapon can do, I will deliver some killing blows on this big carcass. Travis, you're up first. Ready? Sure. Travis, your design of your pata feels good when you're thrusting. It went all the way through the carcass on a diagonal slice, almost cut all the way through the pig carcass. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, Shane, you're up next. Ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. OK, Shane, your edge geometry on your blade is on the thicker side. So it tends to chop as opposed to slice through. But 
in terms of a thrust like that in cuts, it's very lethal. Those kinds of damages will kill. Good job. Thank you. Travis, Shane, the judges have made their final decision. But first, we have some feedback for you both. Jason? Travis, I really like the overall construction of your pata. When you pick up a piece like that, it makes me want to strike something. I like the sheepskin you put inside of that also. And overall, you did a great job. Thank you. Shane, I love the fact that you brought us a piece with a lot of craftsmanship in it. That ladder pattern Damascus in your blade is beautiful. But also, all the supports around the gauntlet being Damascus added a lot to that piece. Even with the cross-section as thick as it was, I was able to flex that blade 20 degrees in either direction, have it come back to true. So you obviously really nailed the heat treat. Nice job. Thank you. Travis, Shane, the Forged and Fire champion of champions is. Travis, congratulations. Shane, this time your blade did not make the cut. Shane, we asked you to turn in an iconic weapon from history. What you turned in is fitting of a Forge and Fire champion. But the weight and edge geometry of your blade affected its performance. It underperformed in the sharpness and kill test. It's for that reason we're letting you go. Shane, please surrender your weapon. Travis built a better weapon than I built. I got beat. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been an honor to come back as a champion. The reason I came back is to become a better bladesmith, and that's what Forged in Fire does. So when I get home, well, I'm gonna spend time with my family and get back to work. Travis, you beat out three others to become our champion of champions. Congratulations, you will also be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. This is awesome. Shane is a very skilled guy, and it was really neat competing against him. It felt really good winning Forge and Fire once. And to be able to do it again and say that I'm a champion of champions is a pretty neat feeling. But I got to head home and build some grinders. The Vajra Mushti. Wow. Originating in India, the Vajra Mushti is an edge knuckle duster. The unique design features sharpened blades on every side of the handle, making it a specialty weapon only wielded by well-trained Indian warriors. The sharp edges on all sides provided the user with a wide range of lethal attacks, from deadly stabs and slashes to devastating punches. A traditional Indian martial art where the weapon is tied to the fists of wrestlers has lineage dating back to the Middle Ages, and is still practiced today by professional wrestlers in India using non-lethal knuckle dusters. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your weapon and deliver multiple lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Kyle, you're up first. You ready? Oh, yeah. All right, Kyle, let's talk about your weapon here. I was worried about the finger welds that you had there, that they would be an issue, especially when I'm punching. No issues there. I like the fact that as it gets slippery, it gave me a very good grip. Overall, it is a beautiful piece, and your weapon will kill. Oh, yeah. All right, Ben, your turn, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Ben, let's talk about your weapon here. The edges are very sharp, but there are some sharp edges that you have in here. Every movement started to give me a little bruise and cut off some skin right there. But in terms of what this weapon will do, it will kill. Thanks, Doug. My hand. <laughs> All right, Blaze Fist, welcome to the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your Vajra Mushtis, as well as their overall construction, I will be stabbing and punching into this sheet metal and chain. Kyle, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep.
All right, Kyle, in this strength test, your two long blades held up great. The center blade here took some chipping on that chain. I'm looking at the grain in there, and it's, it's pretty big. Uh, I would have liked to have seen that refined. But in general, these two blades held up well. Nice job. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right, Ben, you're up. You ready for this? Sure am. All right, Ben, well, the first thing I feel when I pick this weapon up is its sheer mass. I mean, it's a heavy, heavy weapon. That did you some justice in the strength test. The only thing I could see is a little bit of glinting on the lower blade, but the middle blade, it took a pretty major deflection right here. It kind of cracked one more little, little hit here, and that would just come off. The main thing working against you on this blade is the rough inner surface. I couldn't really find a real comfortable way of getting this finger out of harm's way. But after the strength test is all in one piece, nice job. Thank you. All right, Bladesmiths, we know your weapons can heal, and we know they are strong. Now it's time to find out just how sharp they are. To find out, we'll take your weapons and deliver some stabs and slices on these spice bags. Kyle, you're up first. You ready for this? Yep. Let's do this. All right, Kyle, let's talk about your weapon. It is comfortable. It's a good fit on my hand. It's got a pointy enough tip over there, but with that one piece where you're missing some edges, it was more of a jagged cut. When it came to stabbing and slashing on both weapons on each end, it'll cut. Good job. Thank you, Doug. Ben, your turn, sir. You ready? Ready, let's go. Let's do it. All right, Ben, let's talk about your weapon. The weight that you have here back up the cut because you have very sharp edges and the cuts are very deep. But my hand, when I'm making impact, still rubs on the inside of your handle. But other than that, sir, your beast, it will cut. Thanks, Doug. All right, guys, you guys both came through with unbelievable pieces of work. Unfortunately, we can only send one of you guys home with the title of Fortune Fire Champion and a check for $10,000. And our champion today is Kyle. Congratulations. Ben, unfortunately, you're not walking home the champion today. The time has come and I have to ask you to leave the forge floor. All right. Thank you, guys. This Thank was you. awesome, for sure. Good job, Kyle, man. amazing job. I busted my butt and honestly did the best that I could, so I don't have any regrets. Well, Kyle, congratulations. You'll be leaving here with the title, Forge and Fire Champion, and a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. My wife's going to be super pumped when I tell her that I'm the next Forge and Fire Champion. What are you going to do with that cash, man? My wife and I are probably going to use it for a down payment on a house. That's cool. yeah. absolutely nice. fantastic. Nice. Cool. 18 months ago, I would have never imagined being here today. Hell yeah, I'm Forge and Fire Champion. <laughs> Tabar Shishpar. The Tabar Shishpar is an extremely rare weapon that was used by mounted warriors in India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan during the 16 and 1700s. The combination of two deadly weapons, the Tabar's axe was sharp and lethal, while the Shishpar's mace was just as dangerous, using blunt force to take down opponents. The mace could also contain up to eight flanges that were able to penetrate shields and bash through armor making this brutal weapon a force to be reckoned with. Bladesmiths, the Tabar Shishbar is one weapon with multiple personalities. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will take your Tabar Shishbar and use both ends to deliver killing blows on this ballistic dummy. Mark, you up first. You ready? Mm-hmm. Let's see it. Let's do this.
Omar, it is sharp. That chopped right into the chest cavity, breaking a bone. This ax dug in and gutted him. Your mace definitely will crush. You can see the breaking bones inside. Your weapon will kill. Hey, you. Chris, you ready? I am. Let's do this. into the lung, into the heart. Your mace definitely penetrated through the skull. Bones are broken. I don't think it's gonna end well. Your weapon is heavy, and I'm not a fan of heavy weapons, only because you have to carry it to battle. But overall, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the sharpness test. The Tabar only has one sharp area, which is the ax head. So I'll strike into the side of beef six times with each of your axes. Mark, you're up first. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. OK. Your weapon's nice and light for a weapon that looks as heavy as this is. You can see that this just went right through the ribs. This is definitely a cutter. Good job. Thank you. Chris, you ready? Let's do it. OK. Yeah. Right off, the weight difference. I mean, this thing hits like a ton. These hooks tear meat coming out the back way. Your edge, there's no damage that I can feel. It's heavy, but uh, it does a hell of a lot of damage. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. Now, to test the strength and durability of your Tabar shish bars, I'll be using all parts of it to strike this suit of armor. Mark, you're up. You ready? Yes, I am. Let's see it. Edge is still perfect. No chips, no rolling. Well, the hammer gave that armor a nice dent, didn't take any damage. Mace is fine. The guy inside there was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, you ready for this? Don't hold back. <laughs> I'm not going to. This is a heavy weapon. Yeah. I mean, I can control it, but I don't have any rebound. And you got just the smallest bit of edge deformation here. Other than that, Mace is a devastator. You made a beautiful piece. Thank you. I hope the judges appreciate the devastation my weapon's capable of bringing. It's hard to say who's going to win. Bladesmiths, the judge's deliberation is complete. And there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is. Mark, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Chris, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just.
Mark, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. How do you feel right now? I feel great. Chris, a hell of an opponent. I'm glad it went to the very end. I wanted to see a real competition. Mark, please present your weapon to the judges and shake our hands. I won. I am the champion. Whew. Unbelievable. I just won $10,000. My wife and I, we made a deal. She gets $9,000, and I get $1,000. So congratulations, dear. <laughs> A bouge. <laughs> Named after the Indian city of Bouge, this 18th century hybrid axe knife was often used by the armies and bodyguards of monarchs known as Raja. Featuring a broad single-edged blade mounted to a long half, the lethal weapon could be wielded as a powerful two-handed battle axe, ideal for both hacking and slashing. Warriors could also impose stealthy and deadly attacks with the small stiletto dagger concealed within the half of pommel. This brutal yet highly ornate weapon was often inlaid with gold and silver and features an elephant's head, a sacred animal. Video game enthusiasts can virtually wield the bouge as a Rajput warrior in the game Deadliest Warrior. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. Your bouges look beautiful, but are they deadly? Well, to find that out, I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows on two pig carcasses. Joey, up first, ready? I'm ready. First up, this blade is sharp. The point is easy enough to get into the carcass and slash on the way out. It's got a great feel to it. Nice stiletto. There's even a handle that you put on this so it gives a nice look to it. Overall, sir, this bouge will kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, Benton, are you ready to hand it up? Ready to rock and roll. Sorry, man. It's a big piece of shrapnel. Damn it. Well, Benton, one of the things I like about this, you put on the leather, it gave me a very nice area to hold on to, and it's a void I can tell where the edge is. But the obvious happened. It's a coarse green structure here. I should have normalized that tang much better than I did. But when you're grinding away long days in the shop during this challenge and you're just focused on the finish line, it's easy to overlook some things, and obviously I did. Well, Ben, any warrior knows that if you leave a piece of shrapnel that big at a target, it's deadly. However, a warrior also knows that his weapon needs to be strong, and your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure in our very first test. And therefore, you cannot move forward in this competition. Come on, brother. You did a great job, man. I did. I feel pretty bummed, but this challenge has been both very difficult and invigorating at the same time. I've made things that I've never made before, and I've overcome some challenges that I've never had to face before, so overall it was a great experience. Joe, your blade is sharp, deadly, and strong, and you are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job. How do you feel right now? It's a little surreal. I'm a Forged and Fire champion. I won, but, you know, it'll be nice to win after the three tests. But this has been a totally unique opportunity. It's really a big affirmation of my abilities. Yeah, it's amazing. The Conda. Oh. 
The Khanda is a sword that gained popularity in medieval India during the Gupta period between 320 and 550 AD. The word Khanda is derived from the Sanskrit word Khan, meaning to break, divide, cut, or destroy. Its wide, thick, straight blade was not only used for thrusting, but also as a hacking weapon. When a Rajput warrior was surrounded by the enemy, he would pull out the Khanda and fight to the end while swinging the blade with both hands, taking down as many enemies as he could in an honorable last stand. Bladesmiths, this is a kill test. To test the lethality and function of your weapon, I will take your weapon and deliver three vertical chops and then a slice. Ben, you're up. You ready? Guess so. Well, Ben, the damage that your blade did cut about six inches deep into both shoulders and right through the spine. On the horizontal slice, it pretty much cut all the way through. It's got a good feel. This, sir, will kill. Thank you. Tom, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Tom, you definitely cut in about six inches deep on the shoulders and about eight inches into the spinal column. Cut halfway through into the carcass. Also feels good in balance with a downward vertical slice. There was a slight bend that's happening to your blade, but it will kill. Blade splits, this is the sharpness test. I will slash across these bungee cords. If your blade is sharp, it should cut all the way through. If not, it may just push it aside or bounce off. Ben, you're up. Are you ready? Sure. Shit. Well, Ben, your sword started to cut. Cut a little bit, but it did not cut through. It feels good on the slice. The handle is very comfortable in the hand. But once again, it didn't cut through. So it brings into question the sharpness. Tom, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Ooh. Well, Tom, it did cut a little bit into the bungee cord. But then, as you yeah. can see, that transference of energy went all the way back to the blade. It wasn't sharp enough to cut through and it bent your blade. Which brings to question the heat treatment you did on your blade. Cut around corners now. <laughs> it will cut around corners this time, right? But in this particular case, it will not cut, sir. Gentlemen, both of your weapons failed in the sharpness test. Historically in battle, blades bent. Tom, we'd like to give you the opportunity to straighten your blade so that you can continue with this fight. However, we will be taking that bend into consideration when it comes to final judging. I understand. Should have left it thicker, but I'm not a quitter. I'm gonna fight to the end. Okay, Tom, you've straightened your blade. We can continue with testing. Dave. Gentlemen, this is the strength test. I'm gonna take five chops into these copper pipes and see how far through we can split. Ben, are you ready? Not at all. <laughs> yes. <sighs> well, Ben, it's still one piece, but barely. And the, the dimensions of your guard here on my hand are perfect. Your blade, it's held up beautifully. Nicely done. Thank you. So Tom, your turn. Okay. All right. So Tom, what happened is we lost a piece of the guard right there. Yeah. With the broken guard and the bend earlier, I feel it's unsafe to continue. All right, thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. I'm disappointed. I know I could do better, but 
that's what happens when you don't use your time right. Gentlemen, in just five days, you've both done an amazing amount of work on your condos. But in this arena, there can only be one Forged in Fire champion. Ben, you are the Forged in Fire champion. Tom, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. Well, I got to meet some real nice craftsmen. And uh, I learned, don't let your age slow you down. You don't know how long you got. Ben, congratulations. You are the Forest and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Most people get guard sizes all wrong, and the Conda has a deceptively small guard. You just hit it out of the park. Thank you. It feels amazing to be the Forge and Fire Champion. It's a, a wonderful validation of a long time of knife making, and I made new friends. I made 10 grand. I mean, what more could you ask for? The Indian two-handed sword. Emerging around the 17th century, this rare two-handed sword joins some of the most iconic bladed weapons produced in the Indian subcontinent. The long double-edged blade reached lengths of up to five feet and was so heavy, it required the wielder to use two hands for more accurate strikes. It also featured three brass globes positioned on the shaft that offered a more secure grip, as well as a counterbalance for the heavy blade. Despite its substantial size, the blade was designed to flex. By the mid-18th century, improved gunpowder technology spread throughout India, making the Indian two-handed sword obsolete. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, we'll take your sword and deliver killing blows on this boar carcass. Jonathan, you're up first. You ready? Go for it. All right, Jonathan, let's talk about your sword right here. First up, it's sharp. Definitely lacerated through easily. When wielding this weapon, there's a nice balance to it. Overall, your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. Ed, are you ready? I yes, am. Sir. All right, Ed, let's talk about your weapon right here. First up, I like the leather wrapping that you did right here on the handle. It gives it a good grip. Your blade is a little bit on the heavier side, but upon the swing, it lacerates deeply into the carcass. It will kill. Gentlemen, this is the dreaded bone chop. Remember, this test is all about what the bones do to your blades and not what your blades do to the bones. Ed, you're up first, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Well, Jonathan, it's a similar result. There is some edge chipping here as well. The handle being round on one of the hits did, did roll in my hand. Aside from edge chipping, held up very well. Well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, to test the sharpness of your blade, I'll be cutting through these pumpkins. We'll take a look at those cuts, see how clean they are. Jonathan, you're up. Are you ready? Ready. Jonathan, you can see your blade has such a flexibility to it that when it hit, the blade actually warped out, cut over and through. The heck of a cutter. Nicely done. Thank you. All right, Ed, you're up. Are you ready? All right, Ed, 
that's a good clean cut on that pumpkin. You can kind of see what happened. I started compensating for the weight and pulled up and through. The weight factor in me using it is an issue, but definitely sharp, definitely a good cutter. Well done. It's really hard to say one way or the other right now who could and couldn't win this thing. Jonathan and Ed, the judges have finished their deliberation, and there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is... Jonathan, congratulations. You are a new Forged and Fire champion. Ed, your sword didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. I agree with the judge's decision. His blade was more usable. I made a good blade. He made a little bit better blade. No matter what, I'm still a happy cat. Jonathan, good job. You are a new Forge of Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for how much money? $10,000. $10,000, that's right. Thank you. Jonathan, please present your blade to the judges. I won Forge of Fire. That's pretty awesome. It's not really sunk in yet that I won. I'd love to have one of those grinders, so <laughs> I might buy some shop tools, too. We'll just, we'll, we'll see. The Cora. <laughs> the Cora sword originated in Nepal, where it was wielded for centuries by a legendary group of soldiers, the Gurkhas. The Gurkhas were known for their fearless military prowess and weapons-based martial arts, which included symbolic weaponry like the Cora sword. This fearsome sword features a long curved blade that flares outward at the tip, maximizing the force of each swing and making it an ideal weapon for both slashing and chopping. Also used in sacrifice, a skilled Cora wielder could reportedly cut a sheep in half with just one swing. The Nepalese Cora was a blade that had a distinct inward curve and a spatulated flare at the tip, making it a weapon for slicing and chopping. I will cut across these sandbags. Let's see how sharp your blades are. Josh, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Josh, great balance. The blade really wants to chop and slice. The recovery on the blade makes it one that wants to continue for combat. One problem I have here is this handle. It tends to roll. But other than that, it will cut. Good job, sir. Thank you. Liam, you're up next. Are you ready? Yeah. When he said that this was heavy, you weren't kidding. This is a chopper. A little hard to control on the recoil, but not enough to where I can't wield it. This, sir, will cut. Great. Good job. Next up is the strength test. Dave? Gentlemen, to test the strength of your Cora, I'm gonna take one blow into these skulls. Josh, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. All right, fantastic. Nice. Josh, went right into the skull. Swings easy, super lightweight. But uh, like Doug said, the handle wants to roll in my hand. Nonetheless, nicely done. Thank you. All right, moving on. You ready? Yeah. OK. <laughs> wow, that's a beast. <laughs> it feels really nice in the hand. You did a great job on this handle. Obviously, we pretty much took care of that skull. Now, this thing, once you get it started, it's going to go. Right. Um, my only worry is, is stopping it. Yeah. You don't always have to have a heavy blade to make a heavy blow. But it's a beautiful piece. It's a nice job. Thank you. Well done. Liam, Josh, both of your weapons are spectacular. But in this competition, there can only be one champion. And that champion is. Liam, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. 
Josh, unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. I came here to challenge myself, and I came here to hopefully represent bladesmithing well, and I think I did that. Liam, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for 10 grand. Good job. You are our youngest champion so far. <laughs> congratulations. Great job. Good job. I just won Forged and Fire. Just wow. This is a big feat for me to accomplish against a master smith. I think that all the people that I went to high school with, they'll finally realize it's not just a, a hobby. It's something that I can really succeed at. I'm gonna use the $10,000 and just put it straight into a new shop. And uh, these are like my only pair of jeans. So maybe I'll get another pair of jeans. <laughs> the Halati. Ooh. The Halati was a fearsome double-bladed dagger created in ancient India. The two recurved blades would meet at a straight handle and could be used for slashing or stabbing. Some Halatis even featured a third blade running out of the handguard. Though the Halati might seem like something out of a fantasy video game, it actually dates back to the mid-5th century and was wielded by the Rajput, a major Hindu clan known for their bravery and ferocity in battle. Bladesmiths, the Halati was a weapon used by the Rajput warriors. It was designed to have a blade on both sides of the handle, and they were known to be very sharp. To see how sharp your weapons are, I will take your blade and deliver multiple cuts and stabs to this canvas bag. Ray, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. OK, Ray. I like the design of your blade. It feels good in the hand. You got that ovoid shape for the handle. And I like also how it flares over there so it stops for the thrust. I love your recurve and Damascus pattern that you have on both ends of your blade. It's very dramatic and it looks good. The belly of your blade slashed nicely on the canvas and it allowed for a good thrust. And this blade will cut. Good job. Thank you. Steven, you're up next. You ready? Hell yeah. Let's do this. Going up against a master bladesmith with 30 years experience is definitely a little nerve wracking for me, but I'm pretty sure I got everything executed perfectly on it. Well, Steven, we have a big problem here. What's the problem? We specifically asked for a recurve on each blade. These blades are not recurved. They're simply curved. We put that specifically on our parameters so that both blades are equal and fair in all the tests that we do. Your blade does not have that S-shaped recurve that we're looking for. Because you don't have that S-shaped recurve that we needed for the parameters, we cannot move on to test your blade. Well, Steven, the devil's in the details. The blade parameters were very specific. We asked for counter recurve blades on your Halati. You didn't deliver that. And therefore, since your weapon cannot be tested fairly and evenly, I must ask you to please leave the forge. I'm feeling a little bummed that I put in all that hard work and I didn't even get to test it. I still feel really proud of my work. It's just I failed to see the one small detail, and that led me to losing. I learned I got to follow the instructions a little better. Ray, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. It's a good looking weapon, sir. Thank you. I love your Damascus pattern. Really, really nice recurve with beautiful shape. How do you feel right now? Feeling really good. Being Forge and Fire champion, it's it's really nice, especially at my age. I felt a lot better about it if it, you know, if they could have did the cutting contest and everything with this blade also. But I just sold a knife for ten thousand bucks. That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs>